guys, it's Ultimus. Uh, as previous or in a previous video, please do forgive me if I don't sound as excited or as pumped about what's going on. Uh, there's people sleeping in my house at the moment, but this is the only time I'm going to have to sit down and record this bad boy. So we're just going to have to make do with what we got. But that does not mean we are not excited about what we're going to be going over. But I'm also slightly nervous and concerned because we're talking about the Warrior today. We're looking at the Warrior class preview. I always get anxious when this stuff comes out because this is my class. This is my bread and butter, my boy. My, my boy Ultimus here is going to be affected by these changes. And it's been a decent expansion in Warlords of Draenor. But I guess we should say damage-wise we've been good. And I'm, I'm speaking strictly from a PvP standpoint, since I rarely PvE at all. So please understand that. Damage has been good, but overall mechanics and play style have definitely been pretty clunky and just not as fluid. Uh, Fury seems to play fairly fluidly. I do like that you're always having attacks. Um, and you're not really having to worry about breaking CC. You have the option of single target versus AoE attacks, whereas arms very very pigeonholed into you are an aoe machine which has its strong points and can be great and there's a lot of options and opportunities for that being very successful again it's like when i'm sitting at a flag in arathi basin or battle for gilneas as long as someone is there to keep me alive or i'm able to time my defensives right no one is taking that flag or that capture point from me you know, going into arenas facing teams that really struggle against cleave comps, and I'm playing something heavy cleave comp like, you know, we were looking at what, a TSG or even a turbo cleave, something like that. You know, it, it's it's great. Like, we, we shine there, and it, it really does fit for Warriors, but the overall play style, I think, is very lacking, um, especially compared to Mop Warriors. Now, a lot of Warriors will argue what the glory days of warriors were but i think one thing we can honestly say is the warriors were at a really good spot in mist of pandaria damage was good defensives were good mobility was great um, that's the one thing i think i can honestly say i miss the most single target attacks aside but actually having the mobility that i did i felt like it was a lot easier to stay on targets than it is now though it's not too bad right now between hamstring and things of that sort and we have thunderclap but just being able to move around banner uh, with banners around pillars and things like that. But uh, we're not here to rehash the old days. I'm just speaking comparatively speaking. Um, let's focus on Legion, Warriors and Legion. This video might be a little bit longer because I think we're going to share a little bit of my opinion. Uh, more so, and of course, I have the most to say about this because I feel like this is the class that I know the most about. So if this one's a little bit longer than our other class preview videos, I apologize. Also, in case you haven't figured out, we're going out of order. This was one of the last previews that they gave, and I just don't feel like waiting anymore. Uh, last note before we dive right in, I'm going into this blind. I have no idea what to expect. So as I'm reading these changes, uh, it is going to be genuine first reaction. Things we know about Warriors going into Legion right off the bat is the biggest thing is Glad Stance is rest in pepperonis. It is no more. Blizzard has said that while they like the concept, the idea of balancing it and tweaking it around, having to manage basically two completely different stats for the same spec, essentially with a few extra tweaks, just wasn't going how they wanted to. I was hoping we were going to get a fourth spec for Gladiator Stance alone, because um, I know they can do it, especially with Druids having the four specs, uh, but it just doesn't seem to be the direction that Blizzard wants to go with it. And while I disagree with it and I'm bummed out by it, I can respect the decision, and I feel like the reasoning is behind it are good enough so it is what it is and there's nothing i can really do about it unless i had like you know massive amount of subscribers to the channel and then i might have some pull and some weight my opinion might matter but we're not going to talk about that so moving in to warriors warriors are the quintessential fearless fighters on the battlefield and their pure martial prowess inspires courage in allies and despair in enemies, experts in all manner of melee weaponry and possessing incredible physical strength and skill, warriors are perfectly suited to serve as frontline combatants and battlefield commanders. Warriors are thematically informed by our own history, dating back to ancient clashes when close quarter shield and sword combat was the backbone of the battlefield strategy. Warriors in WoW are steeped in this tradition which is with each specialization filling distinct niches. 
One notable goal we have for Warriors and Legion is to significantly expand their custom custom wow, can't read again. I need to go back to school. Customizability is that even a word? Whatever it is now. Through talents, especially for arms and theory. If the below core abilities seem sparse, it's to leave room for more from talents than ever before. Okay. Both specs now have five rows of core throughout thorough. Put talents most different mostly different between arms and fury too, with a strong mix of active rotational abilities, passive procs, cooldowns, and other interesting effects. You'll find old favorites like Overpower, ooh, it's back boys, <laughs> Heroic Strike, and Opportunity Strikes, returning classes like Avatar, Dragon Roar, and Stormbolt, along with a host of brand new talents. We we'll look forward to seeing the combination that you'll put together. So just right off the bat, what I'm seeing here, what might be fun, is if you want to put together a control spec warrior but again i don't know again where this is all going because i have no idea what the talent trees are going to look like i have no inside information on any of this but what the t if you're going to get like a bunch of different stun talents and things like that or cc so you can put together like a control warrior to where you're going to have be able to throw out more stuns and cc on the target are you going to be able to focus more on bleeds are you going to be focusing more on your aoe attacks more on your single target stuff who knows but again what they're putting out here what they're suggesting and what they are presenting as being their goal um, I, I like the overall premise of it. Arms. Across culture and kingdom, men and women who demonstrate great physical aptitude are transformed into mighty warriors through tests of strength, endurance, and fighting capability. Their friendships are forged not in the classroom, tavern, or workshop, but in the dueling pits or on the arena floor. Ain't that the truth, baby? As a childhood of sparring defines a warrior's destiny so too does one's choice of weapon determine their role on the battlefield arms warriors gravitate towards two-handed weapons instinctively it's more than a matter of preference it speaks to the character of the wielder arms warriors are patient in a fight waiting to capitalize on moments with an opponent is left exposed two-handed weapons allow them to deliver devastating overpowering blows fully exploited their enemy's weaknesses Gameplay, the bread and butter, the meat and potatoes here. This is what we're getting into. Gameplay, the defining character trait of Arms Warriors already mesh well with their gameplay, but there's room for more flavor. That I will agree with. Um, definitely no complaints there as far as, I mean, yeah, what they're going for, they've been able to pull off even in WAD of being very patient and slow, uh, which unfortunately has been a little too slow, a little clunky, but it is what it is. There it is. Let's move forward. Flavor, I definitely agree with. I definitely could use some extra seasoning in my warrior gameplay style. In Legion, we've opened up a wider variety of potential gameplay styles based on your talent choices, as discussed above. We also replaced their mastery with Colossal Might, interesting, which increases the effectiveness of Colossus Smash, playing into their theme more directly as before Arms Warrior. Rage generation comes from auto attacks. Interesting. I'm curious. So definitely our big damage is going to come through Colossus Smash still. I'm curious. We'll get down to that Colossal Might in a second here. Mortal Strike, 20 Rage. Melee Range, instant 6 second cooldown. A Vicious Strike that deals strong physical damage and reduces the effectiveness of healing on the target for 10 seconds. So pretty much the same. Kind of a bummer that doesn't generate Rage anymore. Again, we're still looking at being a Rage uh, ex Expenditure. Slam, okay, that's cool. I called that one. Yes, feeling smart. 15 rage, melee range, instant slam an opponent causing moderate physical damage. So that's cool. We at least have slam for our baseline single target. Colossus smash, melee range, instant 45 second cooldown. Smashes the enemy's armor, dealing massive physical damage and increasing damage you deal to them by 20% for 6 seconds. Obviously, I'm, I'm assuming that's so low because it's going to scale up with your mastery. Execute is 10 rage. Melee range instant attempt to finish off a foe, causing strong physical damage to the target and consuming up to 30 additional rage to deal up to massive additional damage, only usable on enemies that have less than 20% health. I still wish that they would remove that 30 rage cap on, on execute. I would, if they were going to cap it, I'd like to see it cap up to 50, but I kind of miss the good old days when just whatever rage you had got pooled into execute. And... Maybe better warriors can explain why that's not a good idea, and I'm just thinking too small here, but I just miss those days when you could just pool all of your rage into execute. I just thought that was kind of fun, but I suppose it is what it is. 
Tactician is a passive, which just states that Slam, Whirlwind, and Execute have a 20% chance per target to hit the reset on Colossus Smash. That doesn't make sense. That wording sounded kind of weird, whatever. So basically, Slam, Whirlwind, and Execute, each of those 20% chance per target hit to reset the cooldown. Okay, so... Assuming we still have sweeping strikes, though I don't see that as part of the core rotation. I don't understand why they wouldn't be up there because that's a pretty core ability that makes me concerned. Um, but for everyone, they hit 20% chance to reset the cooldown on. That could actually be kind of brutal, especially with Warwinds. Like if you're hitting a bunch of enemies, you're going to see Colossus Smash come off cooldown pretty quickly, I think. Mastery's Colossal Might increase the damage of your Colossus Smash by 50%. And causes it to increase damage taken by an additional 50%. That's pretty brutal. Um, I'm imagining that's going to scale with mastery. Though it doesn't have the typical parenthes parentheses uh, statement there of with typical mastery gear on there. Which is interesting. I wonder if they changed all that across the board. But that's, that's very, very interesting. And additionally, to give you an idea of how some talents may build upon this, here's an example of one of their arms specific talents, Titanic Might. It's a passive. Increases the duration of Colossus Smash by 200%, but halves its effectiveness. Crazy, but that almost won't matter if its effectiveness is halved if you're going to stack enough mastery. If Because, I mean, if we're stacking enough mastery, then it's not going to matter. Because what's the, what's the baseline on it? Uh... Increase the damage you deal to them by 20%. Okay, so that would go down to 10%. But with your mastery up to... If, I just feel like... I mean, well, obviously we're going to see what ta other talents we get. But that's that's kind of insane. The duration by 200%. So what? That's... 6 seconds. 100% would be... 12... I'm super bad at math, so that'd be what, 18 seconds, 24 seconds for Colossus Smash? Either way, that's a massive window there. That's a massive window for all of it. Because, I mean, especially, like, cause as an arms warrior, pretty much all your burst and all your damage is coming through Colossus Smash. I mean, that could potentially extend the duration of your Colossus Smash window for the entirety of your burst. Because how long does Recklessness last? What, 30, 20 seconds, 30 seconds? Uh, Avatar lasts 20 seconds. PvP trinkets, we'll see what's going on with all that because we really haven't got too much information official for what PvP gear and trinkets are going to look like. That's a pretty big window. I mean, depending on what we're looking at, that might just chunk people. I'm honestly okay with, with a lot of what they're introducing. I'm, I'll be curious to see what's happening with Sweeping Strikes since that's not listed. If that's going to be a talent, that's going to be interesting. I don't know how I feel about that. But having Slam as a baseline talent, very happy about that. I did say in the uh my previous video my hopes for warriors in legion was that we'd have something like that or um overpower but they did mention overpower up top so i'm curious if overpower will become a baseline ability or if it's going to be a talent yeah, so it makes it sound like it's going to be a talent the overpower or heroic strike but if either one of those are baseline that'd be nice but overall i think Warriors sound like they're, at least arms, at least looking at the sound like they're going to be in a better place. We'll see what their mobility is like. Um, having Slam, I think, is going to definitely help fill in the gaps so you're not having to whirlwind all the time. Mastery is, okay, I almost preferred our Mastery the way it is now, just a flat baseline damage buff. But I could see this being potentially very, very good as well, especially in combination with this talent. Well, again, we'll have to see what other talents we're getting as well. But kind of cool. I, c I can get behind that. Some good stuff. So far, I mean, overall what they're submitting and what they're proposing for Warriors doesn't sound super bad. So that I'm, I'm optimistic. Okay, Ner nerves are settling a little bit. For Fury, on the battlefield and in the arena, the most feared combatants are often the furious berserkers who lust for battle and thirst for blood. Through a lifetime of training and sparring, these merciless warriors have become masters of carnage, often wielding a weapon in each hand to maximize the destruction. Even without the protection of a shield, the Fury Warrior leaves little opportunity for an opportunity to strike without suffering grievous wounds in return. Delivered in a whirlwind of blades that dooms anyone it's in its wake, Brute Force becomes a breathtaking display when Fury Warriors relentlessly dive into the fray. 
Fury is a thematically grandiose take on the classic warrior archetype and a legion we want the gameplay to convey this better. To help deliver on the fantasy of a relentless death dealer, we've bolstered their gameplay around quick building rage and then going wild with Rampage. Ooh, Rampage is coming back? Oh, that makes me happy. I I miss Rampage. Rampage was a dope skill back in the day for Warriors. Okay, consider my interest peaked, Blizzard. Consider my interest peaked. In particular, Enrage is now considerably more powerful, doubling your attack speed and thus rage generation. Since the majority of rage is still generated by auto attacks, along with increasing damage based on mastery similar to arms, a multitude of talents options will expand your combat abilities in a wide variety of ways. I mean, the way they're presenting this, this makes it sound like this is the most fun I'm going to have Fury in a long time. I mean, Fury's been fun this expansion, don't get me wrong, but I mean, this, well, I mean, Rampage is back, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, here's a basic look at the core combat abilities for Fury Warriors. Bloodthirst is a melee range, instant 4.5 second cooldown, attack the target in a bloodthirsty craze, dealing moderate physical damage, generating 10 rage, and restoring 5% of your health. Bloodthirst has an additional 40% chance to be a critical strike, so that's on top of whatever your baseline crit is, add an additional 40% to that, and that's what your crit chance is going to be for a Bloodthirst. In Rage, keeping with the theme to where Fury Warriors are going to be the only uh, Warrior spec with in Rage, Arms does not have it, they haven't had it all of WAD, and so they aren't going to have it through Legion. It's a passive with Bloodthirst Critical Strikes or Activating Berserker Rage will enrage you, increasing the attack speed by 10%. Sorry, 100%. Interesting. And damage taken by 30% for 6 seconds. That basically feels like vanilla enrage. Like, right? I'm not mistaken. I'm not going crazy here on this one. That sounds a lot like the vanilla way. And even through Burning Crusade, I think, way enrage proc. So basically, enrage is now going to be... A big ol' and of course you can even save um, Berserker Rage as well, but it can be an offensive cooldown as well. That's crazy. Increases attack speed by 100% and damage taken by 30% for 6 seconds. So obviously it's a high risk, high reward type of thing to where you're taking more damage, but you're dealing more damage too. So that's kind of cool. I can get behind that a lot. Raging Blow is a 10, or 10 rage, melee range, instant, a mighty blow with both weapons that deals a total of strong physical damage, only usable while in rage. I can imagine that getting out of hand really quickly unless they scale it properly with in rage being such a massive buff. Rampage costs 50 rage, it's melee range and instant, unleash a series of 5 brutal strikes over 2 seconds for a total of massive physical damage. Rampage always deals damage unless as if you were enraged. I don't remember Rampage working like that back in the day, though. But either way, that's kind of cool. That's a, that's a big rage spender. Five hits, two seconds, massive physical damage, and it acts as though you were always enraged. That's kind of crazy. That sounds fun. I mean, you're just going to go into just like Hulk mode and just start smashing everybody. I can already see the macros now. <laughs> Hulk smash. Crazy. Oh, my gosh. It sounds like a whole lot of fun. Like it's attacks like that. I wish Warriors had more up, or something like breaking the Earth open, or something crazy, Juggernautish. I don't know. So that's just pretty, pretty dope, pretty dope. Execute pretty much works the same. Thirty rage, melee range, instant attempt to finish off the foe, causing a total of massive physical damage. Yeah, they sorry they typed that in really weird. It threw me off. A total of massive damage, physical damage, <laughs> only usable on enemies that have twenty percent health or less. And your mastery is unshackled fury. Increase the damage done while in rage by 28% with mastery from typical gear. See, there's that parenthesis there, but it didn't say it for arms. So I'm curious if that was a typo or if that was intended. Interesting. Additionally, to give you the idea of how some talents may build upon this, here's an example of one of their fury specific talents Frenzy. 15 rage. Melee range, instant, furiously slash the target, dealing moderate physical damage and increasing your haste by 5% for 10 seconds, stacks up to 5 times. So the idea behind Fury seems like it's just going to be, you're going to be getting as many attacks out as you can because obviously you want to keep yourself enraged as much as possible. And I know that's very similar to how the play style is now, though it's not necessarily delivering. Um, I'm curious if this will be the expansion that will see Fury Warriors stack haste. 
Because I've always wanted that to be a thing, but it's never actually worked. Crit and Mastery have just always been what you're looking for as a Fury Warrior. So I'll be curious now if Haste becomes something that you actually want to stack. It'll be kind of fun, because Haste hasn't really seen... Haste hasn't really seen any, like light or it hasn't really been in the limelight for a while as a warrior if ever that i can recall it's been a while but definitely not something that you see very often so if they if that's actually where they're going with that that could be very very interesting um not gonna lie though fury does sound fun i i'm liking some of the new attacks i'm liking what they've done with enrage i mean i just again i hope that they can overall my biggest concern and my biggest hope is that overall they can just kind of uplift and polish the warrior Gameplay style, so it doesn't feel as clunky and choppy. So it flows very, very well. Definitely sounds like Fury might be a little more flowy than Arms, but we'll have to see what Arms looks like when we get more of our talents out and all of that. Uh, but so far, they sound promising. Again, heavy emphasis on Colossus Smash for Arms, which is fine, especially if you can increase the duration of that and you can you know, increase the longevity of it to where you've got a bigger window to pull damage into. That's insane, especially if you can keep your setting that cooldown on Colossus Smash spamming. Because, I mean, they're definitely wanting you to use Whirlwind. Again, if, if that's the thing where you're getting a 20% chance to reset that cooldown on Colossus Smash for every target you hit, obviously you're going to want to use Whirlwind in situations where you've got a lot of targets rather than Slam or Execute. Again, wondering what we're going to look like with or without sweeping strikes if it's there. But the option of having some single target stuff does look good as well. Because again, just some there's a lot of situations where AoE just isn't ideal. Let's move on to protection. Gameplay. Oh, I guess we can actually go over the, the, the lore bits there for a bit because it's what we've done with all the other ones. No sense in getting lazy here. Like their counterparts, protection warriors are virtually bred for physical dominance, having been raised in the art of close quarters combat. But their measured approach to battle is what distinguishes them from their comrades in arms. They demonstrate an uncanny knack for blade and shield, nullifying an opponent's advances and creating opportunities for counterattacks. For the protection warrior being the toughest soldier on the front means nothing if allies are left vulnerable for the enemy's attack. Stalwart defenders are integral to the success of any military campaign. The protection warrior seeks to be the unbreakable wall. Protection gameplay ties strongly to warrior lore and exemplifies the very foundation of the tank role in the game. So we're primarily focused on fine-tuning their mechanics. Shield block and shield barrier in particular often created a trap choice for players. We've, we've replaced shield barrier with a new ability, ignore pain, All right. which massively reduces the damage taken up to a cap based on maximum health. Interesting and functions as your primary defensive rage spender. It doesn't compete as much with shield block and thus provides you with the distinct tools in your arsenal to apply different, to different situations. In terms of rage, protection warriors now primarily generate rage through taking damage supplemented by a baseline rage income from ability usage. This plays well with ignore pain as their primary rage spender. It's most useful when you're taking a lot of damage which is also when you'll have a lot of rage to use on it. So the idea, again, is the more damage you take, the more you're going to be able to take, and therefore you're going to be able to keep dealing damage. I can get behind that. It seems very Protection Warrior-esque. As much as I liked generating rage from taking damage as an Arms Warrior, it, I don't know if it necessarily fits. I mean, it, it does, but when since they're trying to create some, some differences between each spec, I guess I could see why it wouldn't be as big of a mechanic for Arms as it would for Protection. Offensive. Here's a basic look at the core combat abilities for Protection Warriors. Devastate is a melee range, instant cast spell, a direct strike dealing moderate physical damage. Devastate has a 30% chance to reset the cooldown on Shield Slam. Revenge is a melee range, instant on a 9 second cooldown. Swing a wide arc dealing strong damage to all enemies in front of you. Dealing or generates 4 rage. Your successful dodges and parries reset the cooldown on Revenge. Cannot recur more than every once every 3 seconds. So it seems like... Is Revenge been this way all of WAD, or is this changing? I don't remember Revenge functioning like this. But this is going to be kind of your AoE hit rather than Cleave or anything like that, or Whirlwind. This is kind of your AoE hit. Uh, deep Wounds, passive. Your Devastate and Revenge cause the target to bleed for strong physical damage over 15 seconds. This effect is cancelled if the target reaches full health. 
I guess that makes sense. You really can't have deep wounds on a target if they're at full health. That doesn't make sense. Get behind that. Thunderclap is an instant 6 second cooldown blast all enemies within 8 yards for moderate damage and reduces their movement speed by 50% for 10 seconds. Curious if Arms Warriors are losing Thunderclap now, since this is listed as core abilities for prot, not for arms. Shield Slam is a melee range instant 9 second cooldown slam the target with your shield causing strong physical damage, generates 6 rage, and heroic strike, 30 rage, melee range. Instant instantly deals moderate physical damage. This ability is not on the global cooldown, so it still functions pretty much the same way. You can macro it into all your other stuff, generates probably a decent amount of threat, and you can spam away on it as long as you get the rage for it. It's kind of your again your big rage dump. Uh, defensive shield block is a 10 range instant, 12 second recharge, two charges. Raise your shield blocking every melee attack against you for six seconds. These blocks can be critical blocks. Very important. Shield Slam deals 30% additional damage while Shield Block is active. Ignore Pain is a 40 Rage instant. Fight through the Pain, ignoring 90% of the next 25% of maximum health total damage that you take from any sources. That's a pretty big debuff there, or buff I should say. You just reduce, just ignore 90% of the damage dealt up to a maximum of 25% of your max health. Which probably, considering Prot Warriors have a decent health pool to pull from, that's a good amount I would imagine. Spell Reflection. Instant 25 second cooldown. Raise your shield reflecting spells cast on you and reducing magical damage taken by 30%. Last 5 seconds or until a spell is reflected. So again there's another ability that I'm curious if Arms and Fury will still keep since it's in the core abilities here for Prot not for uh, Fury or Arms. I can't imagine they take it away but at the same time I, at this point I don't know what they're thinking. So we'll have to see. I'm hoping they don't, though, because that's definitely one of the most useful defensives we have as a warrior. A uh, lot of clutch plays can be pulled off of that. That's you know, no joke. Mastery Critical Block increases your chance to block by 10% with Mastery from Typical Gear and your chance to critically block by 30% with Mastery from Typical Gear. Also increases your attack power by 20% with Mastery from Typical Gear. So fairly uh, similar to a lot of other prot or protection tank spec in the game, uh, guardian druids, death knights, that sort of thing. Um, at least with the attack power buff, and of course you want to take less damage. And additionally, to give you an idea on how sub talents might build upon this, there's an example of one of their protection specific talents. Shield discipline is a passive. Shield slam extends the duration of shield block by two seconds. Shield block increases the damage of shield slam by an additional thirty percent. So while your shield block is up, it's going to have uh, the additional 30% damage to shield slam. And shield slam increases the duration of shield block, so they play off each other very, very well. And again, that's a passive talent you can take. We'll have to wait and see what the other talents look like for Prot. Um, overall, I think the changes are decent and they're good. But I think kind of getting the big picture, there's nothing massively overwhelming that I'm too like just mind blown about but there's a lot of stuff to be excited about for sure um, again with just the single target attacks coming back overpower coming back heroic strike coming back to arms warriors looking at the fluidity of what they want for fury if they're able to again pull both these specs off I think is going to be a nice little breath of fresh air and overall while I can say nothing extremely overwhelming or mind blowing it's nice that there's nothing terrible listed here. I don't see anything here as a warrior that makes me go, what are they doing to my spec and my class? So that alone makes me pretty happy, and I'm excited to get into beta hopefully soon and get my hands on what warriors are going to be feeling like and looking like for Legion. As always, this stuff is subject to change as this stuff isn't even in beta yet, so we'll have to see uh, when all this stuff starts launching and what it's going to look like in-game. Um, but I am extremely excited to get my hands on it and give it a go. More than any other spec in class so far that we've reviewed for obvious reasons. Definitely hoping that r Warriors can gain some ability or some uh, ability, I should say, to kind of be very tanky. Take damage and deal it right back out. I like that concept of being the juggernaut out on the battlefield. Getting in the fray of it, getting in the mix of it, not having to worry or not really needing to worry about or at least not caring about what's going on. Aside from dealing as much damage as possible, putting the pressure out there, playing aggressively, 
If you've ever PvP'd or arena with me, that's my preferred style of play. I just like to get in there, mix it up. I like being the one to get in there, get the first charge, sit on the healer, take the pressure to the enemy fight. And there's been a couple times when my teammates weren't quite ready for that and I didn't warn them because I'm a horrible person. And uh, definitely caught them off guard and it's cost us matches. But as long as I think the team is aware and there's cert certain situations where it's not ideal for me to just go charging out there for sure. I'm just learning the difference between that. But I'm hoping that we can pull off some of this, especially with arms or fury. And as long as fury stays competitive with arms and vice versa, I like that throughout Warlords of Draenor. And I'll say this is one of the things I think Warlords of Draenor has done right. Has been Fury has actually been fairly competitive the entire expansion. Um, I think it does fall a little bit behind Arms in general, but overall, like if you really want to play Fury this expansion, even for arenas, I feel like you actually can, and that that's really cool. I, I think the fact that we're able to get that level of gameplay for Warriors has been a nice breath of fresh air to where you're not being forced to play Arms. And there's even a couple comps where Fury is actually preferred. So there's that. What's going on with prop? Who knows? If it sees any light in PvP, that's to be determined. Um, I don't really tank a whole lot, so I can't really give too much insight on that. Though I do like the um, the added change for... Oh, where did it go? I can't remember the name of it. I'm not going to lie. Ignore pain. Sorry, I don't know why that was such a difficult thing to remember. But I'm excited. That that sounds like it could be a fun mechanic. You just pop that as you got the rage for it, and it just you just take a ton of damage because you're just ignoring all of it. I like that idea. That uh, gameplay style of yeah, you're hitting me, but I don't care, and you're still just chucking along and just throwing damage out. It sounds kind of cool. Um, but yeah, overall, warriors look like they could be exciting and a whole lot of fun. I am anxious and excited to see what talents they come out with, especially with the artifact weapon. And our PvP talents, as well as just our standard talent trees, things of that sort, what new abilities we're going to get kind of throughout the expansion as we level up, all that good stuff. But definitely um, not dreading Warriors and Legion. So as far as I'm concerned, that's A-OK, -okay, and I'm cool with a lot of this. But I'm going to get going. Let's close this video. I'm going to do a little bit more research and kind of look into what some other people are saying about Warriors just for kicks and giggles. Um, just to kind of maybe broaden my perspective on it, but I wanted to get this out first So at least this way my thoughts and my opinions are my own and then of course as we get closer to a legion release All that will be shaped and things like that I'm always trying to get just a change of perspective and a different perspective on things because there's a lot of stuff that other people think of that I don't and I'm cool with that But that's gonna do it for this video So as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed don't forget to like comment subscribe Share the video if you enjoyed it. It definitely helps, and I greatly appreciate it. Um, and that's it. So I'll catch you next time.